Yo, what's up, everybody? Uh, this is Breathe Part 2 and 3. I know for the remix tape, I did it for uh, on the beats of Fabulous and NF. Just wanted to tell y'all, I know NF, you don't cuss. So I didn't want that part, even though I cussed in that part. Please, no disrespect. I didn't want that to be a representation of how I feel about you. Like, uh, dreams, shoot. Mm, face it, 10 feet down. I could keep going, bro. Your discography is amazing. You're such an amazing artist. And I feel like a lot of black artists don't give a lot of white artists love. I just got to quickly shout out NF, G E Z, Eminem, um, with Lowry. Uh, you know, just, just want to shout y'all out, man. Um, Mike Shinoda, just, I just like y'all got love. Y'all got love from the hip-hop community and the rap community and R&B community. I just want y'all to know that, like, straight up. Um, a lot of people were too scared to, like, admit that, I feel like. Because it's sacred, right? Like, hip-hop, rap, and R&B is a real sacred area for us artists, especially of the African-American community. And we, you know, we protect that, you know, so... I feel like a lot of us do reverse racism just because, you know, and we don't even realize it. Uh, I personally don't, but I know like back in the day, I didn't really understand, um, you know, I wasn't brought up a lot of Caucasian people or any other person in the rap community. So it's fairly new, but I just wanted to tell y'all, y'all got love for me and I appreciate what y'all have done for the community straight up. Um, just giving you your flowers on that So no disrespect on that uh, Fabulous, you already know what it is bro From <laughs> uh, playing basketball Playing basketball Alright, like listen uh, <laughs> uh, Just everything man Cold um, Cold, uh, was it? Cold summer bro And uh, gone for the winter Gone for the summer, all that I've been, I've been, I haven't been a hardcore, like the hardest fan of yours, but I rock with you, bro. I rock with you hard. You're definitely an OG legend. Joint tape you did with Jada, Jada Kiss. What's up, LOX, D Block, Styles P, what up? Um, you know, uh, yeah. Without further ado, we got this track, Breathe Part 2, Part 3. This is, you know who it's about. It's about my former re roommates. Looking, this is the 2020 review of what I did. Um, I just had to give y'all the bars. You know what I'm saying? Just because, um, you know who you are, but we've gone through some stuff. And like, honestly, I was attracted to you and your homie at the beginning. And that's like why I even started talking to you in the first place. And it like started from sexual attraction. And from that point, you know, we became close. But it's like, it's not just you. I, I started a lot of friendships and guys and girls. I mean, stop using Duke people. Just be straight up. Like, if you want somebody for some reason, be straight up. And it's like, if y'all happen to be friends besides that, cool. But it's like, I feel like if you build stuff on a, on a weak foundation, as I say, in the lyrics, you know, it ends up tumbling down, right? So, uh... But just to prep to sandwich this, you know, again, I'll say it again, but I appreciate your family as well as your, your man's family. All parties apply. I don't, I dislike, I will say I dislike how much stuff that was talked behind my back. You're one of the biggest reasons why things didn't work out the way they should have. I hope you know that. But I still succeeded. I still made it. Um, again, no bad blood. I appreciate everything that was done for me. At the end of the day, miscommunication is how it all ended. But, um, you know, you got my phone number. If you want to make things right, you know how to hit me. I've already tried. But, you know, wish you the best regardless. Again, thanks. So, we about to hop into it. I tried spitting on this three different times growing up. There's this Dragon Ball Z AMV that had this song and it fucking slapped. I'm here for another reason this time, though. So, you know, that's just the intro for the, the remix tape. But I'm probably admit that for the actual, you know, EP. But that, I got to stop doing that. The EP that is with the production versus just the acapella and the analysis and conversational purposes for y'all. 
Received a text from you, I knew it was something again Some bullshit, how I ever wasn't a true friend I told you you should come again Not over text, but talk it over in person If it was worth it, I was never perfect I just try to be a bigger person Gave you credit, cause you messed up and came back into my life So it's only right, I tried to do the same thing twice Tell me what was the matter We talked before I moved I said I would go through some changes It would be for the better How could I expect for you to know better? How could I expect for you to know treasure you shun two of your best friends without much effort i should have seen it coming red flags coming up i started running let's be real let me tell you the deal i was taking and tried my hand and flirted how did i feel you found out later i had it grow we played it cool i was taking another chance by then i cheated on her a lot not proud of it just putting myself on the spot i liked your titties a couple bitties i beat it up on the spot it wasn't just you, a lot of other chicks on social media. The screen fantasies I was far but saving, but you had a dark side, but felt to realize I have a dark side too. I just really never showed it in front of you. Sat on your uncle's couch and talked for some hours. We were there for each other when things were looking sour. You met this new cat and from what I heard, I couldn't concur. With your decision, you were smitten, but it's all good. Y'all traveled to Kansas together with your former best friend, right? After that, I figured y'all would stay together despite my disapproval, but you had disapproval from everybody, so I didn't want to be another body like that. I should have spoken up. I know you figured I was a leech and nigga, blamed everyone else and all the promises, couldn't keep them nigga, wondering why I'm even calling you a nigga, cause you acted black, hung around black, fucked with them nigga, let's think bigger, how couldn't you get the picture, the name of the game was changed for me, I told my sister, I knew my breath was stinking, that's why I used Listerine, Crest, tried flossing out on my teeth, I had to contest, I was going to school, failing, doing my best on showing up, driving 40 miles, ain't give a fuck, it was my mission to finish to pay Julia off and to get my girl back. March was coming and I was in her. We decided not to get together again yet. Because if we did, the same problems bet would come around. She was on my chest. We talked about your relationship and how it was toxic. Couldn't say it to your face. Fear no, that was not it. It's like I said, I didn't want to be someone else that didn't support it. I tried leaking you up too. I had to abort it. It's not my place to be in the middle. I had to floor it. Come to find out after I was sleeping on the couch that my best friend told my ex-girl I was mooching off her. That shit is stupid. Hard to stay lucid. I flew up on it. I threw up on it. All y'all said I did was drink vodka and tonic. Dishonest. Y'all gave no boundaries and stuck on it, my nigga. Listen, this is all on me. I take fault and blame for this. Any relationship that is built on a fake foundation will not last. Sometimes, somewhere, that shit will fall. Trust me. That's the type of dude I was. I befriended girls because I wanted to fill that void that mommy couldn't fill. I befriended girls and crushed on so many of them because I wanted to fuck. Some of those relationships grew and tried to become more. But like I said, if you don't fix the foundation, it will come back in your face. Part of me says I shouldn't have taken it back after she fucked up and blew me off, but nah, I forgive. She did better too, tried to, you know, help me get a job at Comcast, and there was, excuse me, was there to listen to some of my problems. She opened up her home to me, and I thank her for that. Despite the fight that her and her man got into, I supported it. Though I talk shit about it to my girl at the time, I shitted on other people's relationships all the time. Yet it was mine that came crumbling down, and the same shit I did came back on me. I was in the middle yet again. Listen here, if you are all ever, and I mean ever, between two siblings, two cousins, two friends, two enemies, etc., cut your losses and abandon shit. Get the hell out of Dodge. I've had so many best friends that if been destroyed because of some she said this she said that bullshit every time to my fellas especially when it comes to women never be in a position when you need to lean on her 100 percent because a they are not built to do that and b most of the time will not do that and will run and if they do happen to stay and do it they won't like it men and women be your own 100 percent support and you will find people that you can lean on after 
as I discussed in my video, man, never agree to any roommate situation if it ain't anyone you could trust without placing things in writing. I was told I could stay as long as I needed to. Never tell someone they could stay as long as they need to if they can't. Set a boundary and stick to it. When a person asks what they can do to help, don't be nice and say nothing. Tell them what responsibilities they have and stick to it. They buy groceries as needed, but don't tell that person that they don't need to pay anything. And then they switch up and say utilities. Then switch up and say that they're mooching and need to come out of more money. You know, funny enough, the person I thought was my... Oh, just bit my lip. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Funny enough, the person I thought was my friend was actually the one wanting to charge me the most. And over time, I started getting closer with the dude I judged before knowing more than her. And I mean, if I wanted to mooch off of you, don't you fucking think I wouldn't have helped you move into the basement, live in the basement. And then when you told me what I would have to pay, don't you think I would have left you two to move back into another place yourselves and would have left? Question mark. Why did I do that? Question mark. <laughs> I admit that money situation with his mom was a bit fake on my end because I should have dealt with her more directly on the money and then instead I went through y'all and her back and forth. All in all, I gave her the money I owed and we were cool. When we moved in together, I paid my money. I should have been classified as a roommate. What I'm doing should have concerned you if I'm not bringing hoes, drugs, and liquor into your place. And what you both do is none of my fucking concern. I worked out and did what I had to do in order to grow. I didn't feel welcome because I infringed on your sex life and quality of life. And I told y'all to let me know if I ever did that and I would bounce. It was always a different story when you two were together. To you, woman, you were too much of a pussy to tell me that shit to my face. I wasn't perfect. And I expected more from you as well. As far as you, my man, though you weren't perfect, I thank you for being the icing on the cake, for introducing me to NF, and for being there for me more than my friend was. Your family is beautiful and they even told me some things about you, but it's cool. I came to respect you and I apologize because I placed judgment on you before I even knew you. I wish my ex's family had enough love for me to reach out and tell me and my ex to get our shit together. That's cold as fuck. I hope you get your daughter back and I hope you and her have the best life and continue growing. I got love for the whole family for what you all did. Take care. So, for this one, man, uh, shoot. You know, like I said what I said, man, I'm going to just sandwich that. I, I Again, thank you. I'm not taking nothing back from what I said. Uh, you got my phone number. If you have any questions you want to talk about in person, we could do that. Other than that, you know, have a nice life. I don't mean that disrespectfully. Uh, I just like, I mean, I, it's a good point to say this on all this stuff. I'm doing this again simply because... You know, to finally, you know, uh, to accept that I did it and to tell you that, that I did it, despite how I feel about it now, I'm just let, ready to let it go, you know, to be honest. But a lot of people out here I'm seeing don't have an example of somebody that's working through their problems. Like, and I want to show you, like, I, I haven't been perfect at all. You know, it took me a lot to get to the point I am today. And, uh, you know, it's not too late for you, especially with what's going on. Mend those bridges. It's Life's too short to be having grudges. Just mend the bridges. You know what I'm saying? If you can't mend them, if you don't, you could rebuild bridges. Everybody wants to talk about once you build, burn a bridge, build a new one. And if you get back with the ex, uh, it's a new relationship. It's not the same relationship it was before. If you get back with a friend, it's not the same relationship it was before. If y'all are both different people, will it ever get to, um, I mean, whatever it gets to is kind of on y'all, right? And I mean, y'all act like it's impossible to rebuild something. So, you know, it's never too late, you know what I'm saying, uh, to, to make things right. So, again, I got love for y'all. I forgive myself, therefore, I forgive y'all. And, uh, you know, hope everything's cool. All right. Feel like I'm reiterating myself, but you know, you get the point. I'm off to the next one. FYI, I'm getting a little tired. Like, you know, <laughs> spitting takes some energy, talking takes energy. Whew, so I'm kind of tired, but I'm gonna keep plugging. All right.